Tim Sherwood is working hard to keep his job, and a 5-1 win over Sunderland could be the magic. And this is China's television, and you're watching Sports This Morning. I'm Cecilia Omerogbe. Here are the top stories on the program. Super Eagles coach Stephen Kershaw is expected to face Nigerian Football Federation Technical Committee on team selection for Brazil World Cup. And coach Zakari Baraje is reaping the prize of failure. He has been suspended by Aimba after four months in charge. And it's make or break for Jose Borinho. The Portuguese statistician believes his misfiring strikers can fire Chelsea to the semi-finals. How will he do that? Later tonight, we'll find out. Tayo Salam will be joining me for these more after this Champions League highlight where PSG thrashed Chelsea 3-1. Matuidi. Terry's header. Drop straight for Levetti. Fantastic start for PSG. Levetti, who hurt Chelsea so much in Naples a couple of years ago, has certainly hurt them here. Well, this crowd's gone absolutely wild. It's the start they wanted. They've been on the front foot from the first seconds, PSG. I mean, can't get enough on it, but that is such a difficult technique. The way in which he controls this on his chest, and it's behind him. He's having to fetch it, and he actually brings it back with his left foot. Absolutely no chance check. Ooh, wow. Penalty. Penalty's given. Against Thiago Silva. Vasquez in no position, the follow-through, Stonewall penalty. A big chance now for Eden Hazard. Extra pressure in a country where he's so well known. Eden Hazard does the job for Chelsea. 1-1. Now Maxwell. David Lewis coming across. Not doing enough. Catch the eye of the referee. Well, that's some of a centre back play. It's just so obvious. He's done well to track the run. All he needs to do is just stand back. But Tweedy got his body in there. Any contact is going to be a foul. Sources to take advantage of it, even against a, a well marshaled defence as Chelsea's is. Torres better be careful at the near post. Let's see. Well, it's ended up in the net. David Luis. One of several defenders who was uh, struggling. Paris Saint-Germain have the lead again. And that free kick, cheaply given away, has been costly for Jose Mourinho. Just a question of who got the final touch. Well, it was a mess. One thing we do know is the delivery from Levetsi was fantastic. David Luiz had that guilty look on his face. Whether that was from giving away the free kick, it is David Luiz to compound his misery of the rash challenge. Jale settles for the throw. Calls for a bit more support. Gets it. But uses up a bit of time. Which perhaps was not the, uh, the best thing from Paris Saint-Germain's point of view. Given that they're on the attack. And they're in at Chelsea here. Oh, oh. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Pastore. There's your big money, man. Oh, just That's why they paid that much. He's been overshadowed by some of the others who've come in more recently. But it's a moment that might just propel PSG into the Champions League semi-finals come the final analysis in London next week. 3-1, they lead the first leg here, right at the death. Well, just, he just goes back and the fright to death to tackle him. He's so close to check speed. Can he get down quickly enough? Claps his body, he can't. And the power just goes through his left hand. That was last week, of course. What will happen tonight? These are more we will be talking about on the program today. Taya Salam is here. Taya, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Cecilia. Great to be here once again. And um, um, the PSG <laughs> players are celebrating like they in the semi-finals after that goal. You know what uh, it means to beat Jesse Mourinho yeah, in the quarter-final, which he has never lost before. It, exactly. After that very um, terrific um, goal by Pastore. But then um, if Chelsea are to qualify today, they can't afford to, to defend like that. Of course, to go deficit, they need to overturn that at Stamford Bridge. Right, we're starting the show with what is happening with the Nigerian Football Federation. Of course, Stephen Keshe. We're not talking about the 
issues, but just the fact that he will be uh, facing the technical committee of the NFF on the April 26th. And of course, he's the major thing, of course, it is for him to defend his team selection. He's expected to submit 35 man provisional list for the World Cup in Brazil. But Keshi, they actually wanted him to submit 40. Keshi said he wants to submit 35. But he was supposed to face them on the day he was in Lagos for a, a kind of a meeting and he didn't make the flight. And of course, it was postponed. And right now, the date is set, April 26th, he's expected to defend his team selection. And of course, the players he will be inviting for uh, the competition in June. Time. Yeah, yeah, no, no surprises. Um, that's been on the cards uh, for a while now. And um, I'm just hoping uh, there's not, no, not so much drama comes out of this. <laughs> and because, um, like I always say, the, the box stops at um, Stephen Cash's table. And when it comes out with that list eventually, um, okay, he is going to be someone to defend it. Yeah, that's all right. I understand why he has to do that. But then um, eventually I, I want to believe the NFF will allow him the free hand to actually um, choose his team. Of course, that's what they've done. That's why they said whatever team he's going to choose, yeah. whatever players he's invited, he will need to defend the reason he's inviting yes. players. And if there are some players they want to, they want to actually... They want to see yeah. on the list. They are yes. not there. He will have to give reasons why some of those players exactly. are not there. So yeah. that's what is going to be. I don't think I it's hope, going to be a major, as, a major, major I issue. I hope it's as easy as as simple as that. I hope it doesn't get complicated at all. Um, like you said now, um, Keshi, I believe he knows the, uh, the profile of the players. Of course, the players he wants. He wants. And if the NFF and the technical committee feel um, some players deserve to be there as well, so Keshi will have to come with a counter argument saying why they shouldn't be there. Like, I hope it's not that complicated. Yeah, I hope it's very it. easy and, and we can move on. Go and on. he has not really been, I mean, he has not been faltered in his team selection. Just check whatever team he selects. Mm. Usually he achieves something with them. I think that is what is important. Yeah. If he feels he can pick all the home base players to the World Cup and of course we get to the semi-finals, well, good for Stephen Cash. So far, yeah, so far so good is working for him. The, the, the thing about football is whatever you do, whatever decision you make, as long as you're winning, then you're the boss. Nobody cares really. So he's gone to the Nations Cup with on this, some on this players. This one, he's gone to the um, Chan um, Championship as well. So he, he managed to come third in that one. So he's doing well so far. But then by the time the results start to go the other way, by the time win. he goes pear shaped, that's where the problem is. But right now, Stephen Keshi is in a position of power really because um, everything since, since he's been in charge of the of the Super Eagles. He is the nothing. Um, he's been really, really, really good. Yeah, very, very, really, really good. And of course, when you have a team, not just your best. Sometimes you have your best players, very good players, but yeah. they don't get to make a team. I think what Stephen Kershaw is really trying to do with the Super Eagles is to have a team, a squad that can always win. Not just having you yeah. know top players. You have the top strikers in Europe, but when they come together, they cannot play as a team. When you're having your best players and they're not playing as a team, it's a problem. But if they're playing as a team, sometimes yeah. you, know, you get the very, very best yeah, yeah. of results. I agree with you, absolutely. That was a beautiful goal by Shola Amiobi there, lovely volley. And I'm sure a lot of people don't have too much time for Shola, but then if Keshi feels um, Shola brings something to the Something different, set up, yes. Yeah, then that's his choice. They, he, whatever happens at the end of the day, we'll have to... Um, um, be a bearded bronze, really. So um, the likes of Shola and Yobi, I know some Nigerians are wondering, they're scratching their heads about why he's on the team. Brownie Day as well, uh, Uncle Ball. Like I always say, Keshi, over to you. Uh, uh, over to him, thing. definitely. That's your job. That's why you're being paid. Of course, you know the best players <laughs> to pick for yeah. <laughs> the World Cup. Okay, moving on. Uh, not a good one for Aimba football coaches. Of course, what is the problem? Two of the coaches, the manager and, of course, the assistant, both of them, have been suspended simply because of, I mean, four, seven matches they played, three losses, three draws, and just one victory. Of course, we knew Aimba Krasnodar Cup Champions League. Mm. I think that was where the whole thing started from. Mm. And of course, this particular season, you, you see them actually 14th position with four points from four matches. And that is supposed to be two-time African champions. Yeah, are you surprised about this? I, I said this, the writer was on the wall after that game against Wait, Abia. just four months yeah, in no, charge. Yeah, but that's the way. Was it losing to Abia Warriors was really yeah, <laughs> the bad I'm, I'm coming. Yeah, but after that loss against Abia Warriors, when you lose to your local rivals, yes. it is very hard to take. Now, it is. coupled that with the fact that they're out of the Champions League and they go to FC Taraba and lose again, and like you said, they are four points from four games, it's not good enough for, for, for um, a team of Ingebaz and quality. But you're, so you're saying something about he's just been in charge for four months. Hello, it's 
the coaching game. It's the most volatile. It's anything can happen. We've seen coaches get sacked after two or three games. And, you know, um, Tim Sherwood will be out of job by the end of the season. His team won 5 1 last night. So that's the way the game is. That's the way the sport um, coaching. That's the way it is, really. And but he as good as the last yes, so definitely. He's a very experienced um, coach. And, um, it's a shame he hasn't worked out well for him at any. But remember, um, the goalkeeping coach was suspended as well. He's in suspension. What's his name again? Um, Schweibel Suleiman. Yeah, he's in suspension. Yeah. After they lost out to Real Bamako in the Champions League. So that's the, that's the way the game goes. Right? And they play Wari Woods tomorrow. And of course, this, yes. uh, uh, one of the coaches had to step in. So he will be the one that will take charge of the game against Wari Woods tomorrow. So they yeah. actually travel without Good luck. Him. Good luck to, to the new coach now. But <laughs> good luck to him, definitely. <laughs> Suspension indefinitely. Yeah. I think that's as good as a sack. Okay, we'll go for a short break now. We'll come back, of course. The Champions League is tonight. Well, the stage is actually set for those that will make it to this semi-finals two matches tonight and also the story on Oscar Pistorius details after this break.